I have a new video series for you guys today. I, um, if you follow my nail polish Instagram, which is at Yuki Loves, and I will link that down below, I posted a video or a picture up about a week ago asking if you would like to see me swatch my entire nail polish collection. A lot of you guys said yes, and then I got your help in determining on how I was going to do it. So um, I decided that. <clears throat> sorry once a week i will post a video of 10 swatches um i'm gonna do it by brand and the first brand i'm gonna do is opi and then within brand i'm gonna do it by color i decided to do this also because i needed some like major nail polish inspiration i wanted to do a sort of swatch my entire collection video i guess something to get me motivated to use my nail polish more um, and as I'm doing this I'm going to see if I want to save or stash or I guess save or de-stash any of my nail polishes and um, I'll be showing you guys live swatches and all of that and determining as I swatch so um, yeah this first video is going to be the first 10 OPI nail polishes in my collection um, these are again by color and the way I've organized my nail polish racks if you guys had seen my nail polish collection sort of midway organizational video which I posted before I went on vacation um, I will link that down below if you haven't seen it um, you would have seen that my OPI start with like whites and sort of like glitters and then it goes to like grays and blacks and browns and stuff so um, I started there um, and I have 10 polishes, polishes to show you as I go on with this video series I know they're not gonna be all posted on Saturdays but for the time being um, the plan is once a week I will post 10 swatches on this channel um, and I'll have photos on my Instagram as well if you guys don't want to watch the video. Um, so yeah I hope you guys like this video series and let's get started. So this first shade is called I Juggle Men. I believe this was from a soft shades collection like a circus themed soft shade collection soft soft shades collection a while back that is so hard for me to say um this is clearly a top coat it has a shimmery sort of shifty pink to purple shimmer in it and it is in a very very clear sheer base i have put down two coats of black nail polish this is the wet n wild wild shine black cream nail polish um, called black cream so I am going to use this as a base for all of the colors today so I'm gonna go in with one coat originally of this nail polish and as far as I remember this nail polish applies pretty thin like pretty sheer the glitter or the shimmer is like really faint you can't see it very well and so it is really obviously clearly supposed to be a top coat So that is one coat of I Juggle Men. I'm going to put on the second coat now. I don't think it's going to be a ton different before it starts to get thick on the nail. It definitely adds a little bit of shimmer, but it's not like an overwhelming, super densely patched shimmer. So even if you layer it twice, you're not going to get a fully opaque shimmer covering your nail like you're definitely still gonna see the black underneath that is two coats of I juggle men because it's not gonna ever get opaque I'm not gonna do three coats on this one so um, I'm just gonna leave it at two but that is the first OPI in my collection that I am swatching for you guys today I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna keep this nail polished it's definitely a top coat like I can see myself using this over some darker blues or like darker purples or something but it's not a polish I see myself using see myself using all the time um, so yeah I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna keep this or de stash this uh, it is pretty it's just you know it's kind of I don't want to say it's useless but it's like cumbersome it's one of those things that's just like I need to be in the mood to have just a tiny bit of shimmer added to a manicure or else this nail polish like doesn't do anything. This next one is called Happy Anniversary. This is a nail polish that was one of the first that I think I purchased of my OPI collection. This was, at least it was in the first like 50. <laughs> um, but it was definitely an old polish and I saw this and I was totally thrown back to when I first started collecting nail polish. This is a very pearly base with a ton of 
um, pearly shimmer running through it. I did a little tester nail and I don't think I need a base coat for this one because I think I will be able to build this up to be fairly opaque. This is going to look very sort of frosty and pearly on the nail when you layer it up. Um, so yeah, this is happy anniversary. This is for sure one of those colors that like certain types of brides will absolutely love. You know, it's like that pearly, I don't know how many times I'm going to say pearly while while swatching this, but it's just that really sheer sparkly color that you can put on without it being too obviously glittery. I know it's not like super in the trend right now to have a um, shimmery like frosty nail, but it definitely was like eight years ago or like nine years ago at this point. So I can see why this color was made essentially to begin with. Um, so that is the first coat of Happy Anniversary. Now the shimmer in this is definitely like a micro fleck. It's got a little bit of a chunk to it, so it definitely is a glass fleck, but it's not as flecky as some glass flecks can be. Um, it has more of a micro mill to it, so it's a smaller fleck. Um, this is one of those polishes that's gonna make you look really tan. Um, and this is actually one of those polishes that I feel like would be a really, really gorgeous uh, pedicure color um, and will also obviously be a good top coat. However, if you do layer this over like a black, for example, the black underneath will not be super clear. It's one of those polishes that once layered over a dark color will be very, very stark and contrasted over a dark color. So it's, it's gonna be super noticeable, um, which is why I didn't put it over a dark base coat because I knew I could layer this up to be opaque. So that's two coats of it. You do still have a little bit of a visible nail line. It is a little bit sheer still, but you can see how much more opaque it got with two coats. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then come in for a third coat. So here we go with the third coat. Um, this polish is on the third thin side, which I feel like a lot of glass flecks can be on the thin side, which makes it easier to layer up. I've been doing fairly thin coats of this, so it doesn't feel too thick on the note, uh, on, the, on the nail as I am layering it up. Um, please excuse some of the staining, staining I have on my nails. I, like four manicures ago, wore, I think it was like a blue nail polish and it stained my nails pretty bad and then to like for whatever reason I thought to count counteract the blue staining to put a red nail polish on top and it just turned my nails like yellow so that's what happened but you can see with that third coat it's pretty much opaque I can't see a visible nail line unless I'm doing like a very odd angle with my fingers but it's it's like so frosty that you can't really see that nail line anymore. Um, so that is the third coat of happy anniversary. So am I gonna keep this nail polish? I don't know. I have a pretty nostalgic pull to keep it just because it is sort of like an original OPI to me. Like I don't have any good practical reason to keep it. It's just, I don't know. It reminds me of like the old times, but um, in terms of usage, like I really don't think I'm ever going to use this nail polish. So my initial otherwise gut feeling is to get rid of it. Um, I would never wear this over a dark nail polish because I know it would just look too frosty. Um, but on its own, it's kind of not my thing. So I think I am going to destash it. So this polish is called Ski Slope Sweetie cannot tell you where this nail polish came from in terms of collection. Um, I want to say it's from a winter collection, but I also want to say it's from the fall collection last year, which I don't remember what it's called. But anyway, it is basically the gold version of Happy Anniversary. This is the first coat, so you can see that it is sheer on the first coat, but you get a nice golden sparkle. So if you wanted to, you could use this as a top coat over a dark nail polish. I will note that I do have a color very similar to this from Jessie's Girl, um, which the Jessie's Girl one is a little bit more chunky. This um, shimmer is a little bit more finely milled. 
I'm gonna go in with my second coat now. Um, please keep in mind that I have been doing thinner coats on these swatches. I tend to do thin coats. Um, I generally, when I do my own manicures, do three thin coats instead of two thicker coats. I know most people like to do two thicker coats, but I just find it easier to paint my nails with thinner coats. So you can see with the second coat, it already has built up pretty well and um, has made it so that it doesn't look super sheer on the nail. It's time for swatch number three, or coat number three. This is the third coat of Ski Slope Sweetie and it is like happy anniversary in that it's pretty much 90% opaque and so I am definitely not gonna put a third coat on there. Um, I feel like the sparkle and the shimmer layers up pretty well with the three coats so I don't need to do a fourth to satisfy my need for like an opaque manicure. I have no nostalgic pull towards this one like I did Happy Anniversary and I just have other gold shimmers that I like layering more so I'm gonna de-stash this one. So this color is called Witch's Witch and this came from again a Soft Shades collection which I said correctly this time um, and this was from the Wizard of Oz collection that was for that Wizard of Oz movie with James Franco in it. This is clearly a top coat. It has hollow hexes and small little bar glitters. Um, I think with this one, because it's so clearly, like, look at how not densely packed it is. I'm just going to do the one coat of the glitter. Um, because, again, I just feel like this is a top coat and it's not even as, it's not as sheer at all as that first top coat that I did, I Juggle Men. Um, and it would just get too thick on the nail if I did more than one coat. I do like how this glitter is pretty densely packed, but it's still sparse enough that you could use it as a top coat as it's meant to be because the base is a thicker, clear coat. Um, so when you put your brush in, you do pick up quite a bit of glitter, especially if you shake up that bottle. So that's the one coat of which is which that I'm going to do. Now in terms of whether I'm going to keep this or stash it, I don't know because I will decide after I do the next polish, which you'll see is very similar to this one. I do like the way that this was like applied in this one. I like how it's a mix of hex and bar glitter and it's a pretty easy to apply top coat without it getting too thick or like too glittery or like not glittery enough. So I do like um, this glitter so far. So I totally started painting my nail without realizing that I wasn't filming myself painting my, painting my nail. This color is called Servant Up Sparkle and this is the one that I wanted to wait to swatch before I decided on keeping which which or not. Um, this color was from a Serena Williams duo when she did, um, OPI was like major into the shatter nail polishes, right? And she had a bunch of duos that had shatters. And then at the end of the year, she did a combo that was like a purple, um, a purple glass fleck and this polish. I would say the glitter density is the same, so I'm only gonna do the one coat. So this is so far one coat of Servant Up Sparkle. So this is what Witch Witch looks like, or not Witch Witch, Serving Up Sparkle looks like on the nail. I think I'm going to de-stash this one because I like the bar glitters in Witch Witch instead. So this one is going to go out of my stash. So this is Crown Me Already. This was part of a Miss Universe collection, which was like a small mini collection of four people or four polishes um, a couple of summers ago. I'm not going to put a base under this because I know this one is actually fairly opaque on its own and I believe it has a little bit of a silver foily base so it's going to be really like really glittery and fully covered on the nail. So that's the first coat. You know what? I take that back. There might not actually be a silver foil base in it. Just in the bottle, it looks like there's a silver foil base because it's so packed in with silver micro glitter. So that's the first coat again. And you can see how much it does really cover on the first base or first coat. You can definitely wear this one coat over something. Um, so like over any other color, but I personally like wearing this just on its own for like a mega silver, mega reflective, glittery manicure. I'm gonna do the second coat now. 
You can see with the second coat, it almost completely covers in glitter. So it's pretty dense. This is one of my favorite silver glitters in my collection, so I know I am going to be keeping it. Um, it's one of my favorite silver glitters because it's just so opaque. Um, so when I want like a silvery manicure, I know this one is one that I can go to without having to put too much effort into wearing. Now I am going to do a third coat for you guys just so you guys can see um, what it looks like with three coats. So there's like full nail coverage there. Um, I normally just do two coats of this because I don't mind just like the tiny bit of nail that peeks through. But if you wanted a full, no visible nail line manicure with this glitter, you would definitely need three thin coats. Or you could do the two thick coats. As I said, I'm not a thick coat person. So yeah, I would rather just do two thin coats. And for me as a manicure, I think two thin coats is is fine like I I don't know there is the issue that glitter is really hard to remove when it when it's so like piled on so that's another reason why I don't do three coats of this nail polish but yeah it's definitely one of my favorite silver glitters and it's just it's very glitzy and very metallic and just so pretty so again as I said I'm gonna end up keeping the silver glitter because it is one of my favorites you could use it as a top coat you can pile it up to make it fully opaque so it is one of the more versatile silver glitters that I own as well this one is pirouette my whistle and this was from another soft shades collection um, which was I believe it was called the New York City Ballet soft shades collection from like four years ago. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite glitters and it's very, very sheer. So you definitely need a base coat with it. It is a clear base with a soft pearly um, hexag hexagonal glitter and then a very, very sparse micro silver glitter. This one is definitely just a top coat, as I said. Um, here is the first coat. So you can see the first coat barely covers anything so you for sure need to do multiple coats of this and you will never get a fully opaque nail unless you get to like six or seven coats um, and at that point it's just like gross and weird if you do like six coats of a really sheer glitter base like this. This is the second coat of Pirouette My Whistle and it's not again gonna cover any better than the first coat did. It'll maybe add a little bit more sparkle to it, but especially when you um, add or when you try to get the like brush out of the bottle, the glitter pickup isn't great either. So I'm definitely going to keep this in my stash. As I said, it's one of my favorite glitters, and I actually own a backup of this because, again, like I just like how dainty and pretty it is on the nail without being too overwhelming. And it is the only glitter of its type that I own. I don't have anything else that is sparse and soft without being and, and being a glitter at the same time. So I'm gonna keep this in my stash. So this one is Mad as a Hatter, which came out in the Alice uh, in Wonderland collection, I wanna say 2010, spring of 2010, something like that. Um, this was a very, very sought after glitter for a while, and I feel like it's still on people's like lemmings list. And I have had this for a very long time. I haven't worn it as much as I should but it has definitely gotten thick so I've had to thin it out a couple of times. Um, it's still a really pretty glitter though and it covers in pretty much um, two coats on its own. I'm not going to put a base coat under it today. This is going to be the first coat of Mad as a Hatter and I remember purchasing this not because I necessarily wanted the glitter but because I just wanted like every OPI at that point. It was right when I first started collecting and first started making videos and I saw the collection and was like yeah I want almost everything from that collection but because it was a new OPI collection it was very similar to the Shrek collection. I just kind of picked up all of them because um, well I mean the Shrek green colors I really liked but I just picked them up because I just figured I wanted them because I was collecting OPI. And you could see that um, with just the first coat, it did cover pretty well. You could definitely use this as a top coat on its own over something with that one coat, especially if you do thin coats like I do. With this second coat though, you can see how much the bitter glitter does build up and see how much more coverage there is. 
Because I only have one bottle of this nail polish and because it is starting to get a little bit thick and just kind of more difficult to use, I'm only going to swatch two coats of this. Um, again, mostly because I only have one bottle of this. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, carefully using it so I don't run out of it. Even though I know I want to use it more than I do right now, I just, it's one of those polishes that I'm kind of like excited about owning and don't want to get rid of it from like the most collectory, the hoardery standpoint. Again, to get fully opaque on the nail, you would definitely need the three thin coats. You could do two thick coats. Um, I am going to keep this nail polish again from a collector standpoint. Um, and yeah, it's really pretty. I wish OPI would do more like combo micro glitters like this, but I don't, I don't know what kind of trend path they're following. So I doubt they will. This next one is Rainbow Connection from the first Muppets collection. This is a multi rainbow hex chunky glitter, and I'm not putting a base coat underneath it because it does also get pretty opaque because of the size of the glitter on the nail. Um, Although it is really, really usable as a top coat, I tend to layer this one up to get that sort of obnoxious glitter look on the nail. This is like the complete opposite of Pirouette My Whistle in that it has um, so much glitter in it and it's like not dainty glitter either. It's definitely in your face, like fun rainbow glitter. Um, so yeah, the base itself is not as thick as Pirouette My Whistle, so it's definitely um, easier to apply as both a top coat and as a polish you could layer um, on top of itself. So here is the second coat of Rainbow Connection. And it definitely puts more glitter on the nail. You can still see through it though and get to the, like see a visible nail line. So I will do a third coat of this. This definitely gets like thick and chunky when you do that third coat, even if you want full opacity. So if you're somebody that likes a smooth manicure, you're going to hate the way this looks when it's three coats. But I feel like there is a time and place for everything. Like sometimes I do want that obnoxious, chunky three coats of glitter because I want it to be as sparkly as possible. And then sometimes I do want just that one coat of kind of a sparser glitter, but it's still sort of sprinkly looking and like reflective and you can see all the colors. So I personally have, you know, been able to reconcile different types of wear with glitters like this, but um, I know for like the normal nail polish person, they probably won't need like this many glitters for so many like occasions, you know? But anyway, this is the third coat of Rainbow Connection, and as you can see, with that third coat, it does get pretty much fully opaque. Just be aware that it gets really chunky on the nail. So when it comes to whether or not I'm going to keep this nail polish, I'm not entirely sure. I think I still want to swatch Deborah Lippman's Happy Birthday before I decide on keeping this or not. I have already de-stashed multiple nail polishes that I have that looked similar to this. Um, one being a Sephora by OPI nail polish and one being like a random drugstore nail polish. Because at the time that this came out, a lot of other nail polish brands did polishes very similar to this in that multicolored rainbow chunky glitter. So I've already de-stashed a couple of them. So I'm going to wait till I... Um, um, swatch happy birthday before I decide on whether or not to keep this one. So this last glitter for today is called The Living Daylights and this was from the OPI um, James Bond collection, the Skyfall collection from fall like oh, three years ago now. Um, this is a clear base with a teal, silver, and orange glitter and surprise glitter for me because it's very much like a San Jose Sharks glitter. Um, it is a chunky hex in a clear base, but I feel like the hex in it is pretty densely packed, so I'm actually just gonna wear it on its own today. Um, here is the first coat. The base isn't very thick either, so it's a pretty easy to work with glitter in terms of like layering. So that's the first coat. I feel like, however, um, it is a couple of years old, so I just kind of feel like the glitter has faded a little bit, and also maybe the color of the orange 
has leached into the um, base coat. So the base coat used to be completely clear, but if you look at like my bottle, you can tell that it's not completely clear anymore. And the orange isn't as bright as it used to be. The teal is still super teal and the, the silver glitter is still silver. So that's fine, but um, this one has changed color just slightly. So that is the first coat of The Living Daylight. The one thing about swatching nail polishes with glitter is that you get glitter like all over your hands. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I literally have glitter like flecked all over my fingers. Um, especially if you look at like this side of my hand, you might not even be able to see it. Yeah, there. It's just like everywhere right now. So the second coat now will definitely add more glitter to the nail. Um, I might actually, you know, yeah, I'm going to do three coats of this so you guys can see what it looks like fully opaque, but that is the second coat. Definitely adds a ton more glitter. And again, the base coat is clear, but it's not super thick. So when you layer it upon itself, it doesn't get too goopy on the nail, which I actually really appreciate. So this is going to be the third coat of the Living Daylights. I feel like this glitter was also one of those glitters that was really good for um, glitter placement manicures. Like you can pick up individual pieces of this glitter and place them, you know, in random designs if you pleased. Um, I was never really good at those manicures, so I never did them, but you can see that the nail is pretty much completely covered now with the glitter at three coats. I tend to just like wearing this as one coat on its own over a teal nail polish or a black nail polish on my way to a Sharks game. So that is what three coats of this nail polish looks like on its own. Um, this polish definitely can be used as a top coat. I tend to use it as a top coat, specifically over black or teal, because I tend to only wear this to Sharks games. So I am going to keep it. Um, I, however, did want to show you guys what it looked like completely covering your nail so that, um, you know, because you can do it with this nail polish versus some of the other ones you definitely could not wear on its own. Um, so yeah, that is The Living Daylight, and I am going to keep it in my stash. So those are the first 10 polishes in my sort of Swatch My Stash video series. I hope you guys like this video series um, so far in this first video. Uh, I will have photo swatches of all of these on my nail polish Instagram, which I'll link down below. Um, I'll have them over at least the ones that need like base coats like this one, I'll have them over black as well as pink because it was requested that I put it over a different color than black as well. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check out my nail polish Instagram for photo swatches of all of these. Um, I'll try to also put them on my blog, which I'm not very good at, but I promise I will try to update my blog so you guys can see them all in one place versus just on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are liking this video series first video in the series. Um, if you guys do, give it a thumbs up. If you could subscribe, that would totally make my day. Um, and then I hope you guys are excited. Stay tuned for the next like year of my life as I swatch 10 nail polishes a week. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you guys soon.